Everything I do is deeply connected between my eye and my hand. It's an expression of my soul on a page. And it, if it does not delight, if the process of drawing does not delight, it never sees the light of day as an object. <laughs> The lessons of architecture of those places that we remember, that we talk about, uh, proceeding through the Gallery of Glass in Versailles, the first entrance into the Pantheon in Rome, uh, seeing Paris for the first time from the second deck of the Eiffel Tower. They're in that catalog of favorite experiences. And I'm hoping to create rooms that through dramatic contrast, through maybe a bit of storytelling and consistency of line and silhouette, through a, entering a space that is compressed and then proceeding to a space that is large. One has those kinds of experiences of a total environment in which you remember who you were, who you were with, what you were wearing, and what happened in those spaces. I am trying to create environments that evoke drama and romance, that evoke a bit of humor and maybe a sense of mystery. Places that elevate the experience so that you feel that you can be a little more romantic, a little bit maybe more on. Maybe it's the kind of, of place, a place of possibility where you might say, this is the place to pop that big question. This is where I can really be my most romantic self, or perhaps my most dramatic self. Some place where you might live a life that you only imagine when you're at home, but it's your life and it's real. It evokes that kind of experience, an experience of the heightened self, maybe a tad cinematic and maybe a little bit naughty, uh, but certainly a real experience in a place that is unique to end to itself. If you think of balancing a room like balancing a piece of music, you're more likely to have great success than if you're just trying to make it look good. It has to feel good. It's not enough to create a lavish dining room with extraordinary chandeliers and uh, high back chairs and using the finest, the finest uh, stone flooring in the entry and exquisite silk upholstery on the wall. All of that's wonderful. But if you sit in that chair and you're not comfortable, it's not a room I'm interested in staying in. Comfort is always first, whether it's on the handle of a door and how it fits your hand, or how fabric feels not only to your body as you sit in the chair, but how does it feel on the arm of the chair? Is there a surprise to the texture? Is it smooth? Is it, is it rough but in a really pleasant and intriguing way? Those kinds of sensory experiences, does it smell wonderful? Does it sound great when you walk by the rustle of the drapery that I've created? Every one of those are to my advantage if I think about them and use them that way. I've lost count of the number of notebooks that, uh, and sketchbooks that I have filled. I travel the world always with a sketchbook at hand and a variety of pens and pencils. I draw every idea I have. And most of my collections and most of my interiors come from going through those sketchbooks and looking for what I think is appropriate right at that moment. I find that in those sketchbooks, I tend to be inspired by many of the same things. 
and those result in many different collections. I found when I was beginning the exploration of chinoiserie for the Win Kotai Palace project and really looking at a lot of Chinese art, textiles, stone carvings, paintings and furniture for the most part, that a motif of the Chinese cloud, the way that, uh, that Asia has expressed the motif of the cloud, was prevalent in all eras of Chinese art, and it began to interest me. And I found that the drawing of the cloud was a lovely exercise of the hand. It's really hard to do it badly. And it's fun to try to control them, to make them horizontal or vertical, to make them chubby or slender. Uh, and those resulted in jewelry for sieges, a textile for S. Harris. Uh, I've done them in almost all of the kinds of various materials that I work in, carpet for OW hospitality. By modulating the scale and the way it's expressed or shaded, solid color or carved, uh, I've been able to really have fun with a single motif. When I design furniture, I, I have concept, I do drawings, I do very deep drawings. I have an idea of what I want it uh, to look like. But the very best experience is when I take those drawings into the factory and work with the chap who's actually building the wood frame, whose father built wood frames for furniture, who learned from his father, who learned from his father. There's a length and depth of knowledge that enriches my experience and certainly interprets that experience into a more luxurious experience for whomever it is that gets to sit on the chair, buy the chair, uh, and own the chair for a length of time. Working with craftsmen makes me a better designer. One of the greatest inspirations for me in designing any kind of product uh, for the interior is that I simply can't find it in the marketplace and that I imagine or insist on a need for it. It's very difficult to find drapery or shears with horizontal textures, yet the landscape we're looking at through the shears is almost always horizontal, uh, unless you're living in New York City or downtown Chicago where it's a very vertical uh, aspect. So, in not being able to find those, I decided that my collection for Fabricut would be all horizontal in its aspect, so that as I'm looking out a window, the line of the shear complements the landscape beyond. I like finding surprising elements in places they don't belong. It would not occur to most people to put a highly polished chrome stud on matte wool felt but it did to me, uh, because I can't find that kind of contrast, interest, and drama in the marketplace. So one creates it. It's very difficult to find rather large-scaled accessories. Go to any gift shop or any department store, and you'll find that almost everything is nine to 10 inches tall. It's not remarkable. So in creating most of the accessories I've created for the home, I wanted them to feel heroic in this space, and I wanted them to have true drama. And they are that. They're tall, they're insistent, and they're very present. Even boxes for tablescapes, rather than being precious little two or three inch elements, can be nine inch pieces. That also allows them to hold something of substance, rather than being functional only for pills or small, really small objects. Uh, it gives them a whole different kind of life. I imagine a really gorgeous box that's inlaid with a duck shell lacquer holding sewing materials, something that we use in our everyday life that we want close to hand, but we want it to be absolutely exquisite when it's not in use. Inventing things and bringing them to the marketplace is what really distinguishes my design and my interiors.
I get the chance of seeing my creations used in a way I would have never thought, uh, in a more inventive and different way than I would typically see them in my world. That's a great source of pride and delight for me. I love that.